Someone always finds the dirt that airs out the laundry. That's why any and everything I've ever done, I'd rather you ask me. Okay, y'all. This is probably one of the easiest recipes that you can make. I mean, granted, shrimp alone is very easy to cook. Just because it literally takes four minutes to cook shrimp. Two minutes on each side. Literally, that is all it takes to cook shrimp. Um, so this recipe calls for raw shrimp. However, the raw shrimp that I had, the raw shrimp that I had is actually kind of old. And so it's already started to turn kind of white. I'll show it to you all. So there it is. It's already getting like white spots on it. And what I read, because technically this expired um, I won't say when this expired because that's just embarrassing, but, um, yeah, I read that once it starts forming white on it, um, then it changes the taste and the texture of the shrimp. So I am actually not going to be using those. Technically the recipe calls for raw shrimp and that is, well, actually, no, that's not the only raw shrimp I have, but technically the tail is supposed to be raw fish or raw shrimp peel the veined and tail off. The ones that I have say tail on. So I'm actually going to have to um, thaw these and then actually pull the tails off because with the way that this recipe is, you don't want the tails on and you don't want to have to pick the tails off of them as you're eating. So you can either leave these in the fridge and let them defrost or if you want to defrost quickly, you can just put them in like a strainer and just run like cold water over it until they actually start to thaw out. Um, it says approximately five to seven minutes. And then just lightly rotate the shrimp as they're thawing. So that's actually what I'm going to do since it's not thawed out yet. And for this recipe, I actually have to preheat the oven to 450, but I am not going to do that yet. Just just because I have to take the tails off the shrimp. And then of course we just finished with the cake. So the oven's still relatively hot. Which by the way, I had to go, go upstairs to get something and I could smell the uh, cake up there and it smells, smells really, really good. Unfortunately, I'm not able to send good smells your way, but if I could, Anyway, uh, okay. So I'm going to be using this for the shrimp. And just kind of sit it here in the sink. And then don't eat. This recipe, this recipe is like super easy though. It's crazy how easy this recipe is. I'm just gonna sit, hold on, let me. And I mean, it works out anyway, because that last one, it was like small shrimp. This is like medium sized shrimp. So why get small when you can have medium? Okay, and this is going to be really fishy. So I'm going to put this in this bag over here. I'm just gonna use this plate, this paper plate, and I'm gonna put the tails in that. Y'all so. aren't gonna be able to see it, unfortunately. All right, so anyway. I kid, I kid. Like, if there's any way to do something that's not possible, I'm the person to do it. I don't understand how I took so many years of dance and I'm so freaking clumsy. I don't understand how that happened, but it irks my nerves. It really, really does. 
I'm like one of the clumsiest people that I know. I swear I am. But, um, okay, let me get another plate and then I'll be back over there. So the shrimp has already kind of started thawing out because I did leave it in the um, fridge for a few hours but it still got some ice on it so it's not completely thawed yet. So I'm just running cold water over it. And actually, I'm gonna take the tails off now too. So, cause the recipe does not work unless the tails are on it. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you all one of these, one of these shrimps. Okay, so y'all see how it looks now, right? Okay, well anyway, like, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it's kind of got like a gray tint to it. And when you cook shrimp, the way that you know it's done is when it turns pink. So you guys will see a major difference once this is cooked and I'll put a picture. So I'll take a picture of the frozen shrimp and then I'll put a picture of the cooked shrimp next to it. Um, just so you all can get an idea and know that your shrimp is done because I always tell my mom, like she'll get a bag of cooked shrimp and then she'll throw it on the uh, stove and she's like, um, do you think this is cooked long enough? Granted, it only takes four minutes, like I said, to cook shrimp. It doesn't take that long. But I'm like, well, Ma, those shrimp are already cooked. So if the shrimp's already cooked, you don't want to cook it too much longer because then it kind of gets a rubbery taste to it. And then it just curls up really tight and it's just not as, it's just not as good because it's at that point, it's like overcooked. So you don't want to overcook your shrimp. So once it starts to turn pink, that's how you know it's done. And I mean, if you get a bag of cooked shrimp, then technically you don't really have to do anything to it. But if you do do something to it, you don't want to do a lot just because you don't want it to be tough or rubbery. So, and that was like one of my major concerns with this recipe because I have to, the shrimp's gonna go in the oven twice. So the first time I'm gonna put it in the oven with melted butter and it's gonna cook for 15 minutes. And then I have to put it back in again with the pasta. So it's best to start this recipe with uncooked shrimp than to start it with cooked shrimp. But if you don't have a choice, if all you have is cooked shrimp, I mean, it'll be fine. So I mean, it's gonna be mixed in with a lot of other um, elements anyway. You've got pasta and tomatoes. So it really doesn't matter that much. So, and another thing, um, scallops are also super easy to cook. Scallops do not take that long. Like literally all you need to cook scallops is olive oil, salt, and pepper. That is it. And it only takes, even with that, it only takes a couple of minutes to cook those. And then you can add butter to scallops to add that little bit of flavor. I mean, butter helps to add flavor anyway, but you can add butter to it, but literally all you need for scallops is olive oil, salt, and pepper. So, seafood is really easy to cook. I've never done lobster, so I don't really know. I've eaten lobster, but I've never actually cooked lobster, so I don't really know too much about cooking that, but if anybody has any advice or any tips or anything about cooking lobster, um, just let me know. Maybe I'll get around to it one day. But yeah, seafood's really not that intimidating at all. It's easier to cook than red meat, so. And then especially, you know, with um, things going on with this virus and all, you got Tyson and different other, um, different other meat companies that are running into some issues with sick employees and stuff. And they're talking about potential um, issues as far as, uh, the red meats are concerned. And uh, I guess poultry too with Tyson, Tyson's poultry, right? So 
I guess the next thing to turn to is shrimp, but I mean, I don't even know like what's really safe to eat anymore. I mean, before all this, you know, they're like, oh, well, this causes cancer. And then they come back years later and say, oh, well, actually, this is good for you. So it's like, well, which one is it? Is it good for me or is it going to cause cancer? Or are you ultimately trying to say cancer is good for me? Like, what are you really saying? You know? So it's just... Mm -mm. It's a bit much. But literally, I'm telling y'all, this recipe is so freaking easy. So easy. I used to cook this when, um, cause I lived in Tampa for about six months. So when I was in Tampa, I would cook this recipe, not necessarily all the time, but I would cook it often enough and I always had some left over and it was really good. I've got to do my noodles and I've got to heat the oven up to 450. All right, so hold on. I'm gonna show y'all what the shrimp looks like. And then we can do a comparison because I got to put it in the oven for 15 minutes anyway. So I'll show you all what it looks like now. And then once it comes out of, out of the oven, you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what the raw shrimp looks like. So it's got that grayish, uh, grayish color to them. All right, so I have never actually cooked on a gas stove until I moved here. Um, apparently all the houses out here have gas stoves only. I've only used an electric stove. My parents have electric. So the only way that I know that that's working is if the, uh, the eye turns red. But um, I'm working on the pasta now. Y'all see those flames? But yeah, so I'm working on the pasta now. And basically, according to the instructions, it says to do a full box with four quarts and add salt to taste. And then uh, to add the pasta and then cook uncovered and then stir occasionally for 10 to 12 minutes and then to drain. But for this particular recipe, um, it says to reduce the cooking time by one minute. So I think we'll probably do like, cause it says 10 to 12 minutes. So I guess we'll do it for like nine minutes because the pasta is going to go back into the oven anyway. And I kind of like to err on the side of caution. So I'll probably end up just cooking it for nine minutes only. And then just kind of go from there. And then while this is while this is boiling, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and work on the shrimp now. So here's the shrimp. I put it on a plate because I'm gonna have to drain the pasta. So I'm gonna use that strainer that I had earlier for the pasta. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the uh, butter. And then we're gonna put this in the pan. So hold on. Okay, so it says that I have to uh, melt a quarter cup of butter. So there are a couple of different ways that you can melt butter. You can either, if you want to be a master chef, then I guess you could either, um, you could do it in the, on top of the oven in like a skillet or something, just put butter in there. But what I like to do personally, I like to put it into um, into like a container. So I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna put the butter in here. And typically what I do, I don't put it on actual heat setting, but I'll put it on like a defrost setting. It's a little bit different, but either way, it still heats up the butter, and that's what we want. And then we're going to dump that in here. And then we're going to pop it in the microwave. Ah. All right. 
So I'm going to pop this into the microwave here. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing with it. Okay. Alright, so y'all see up here. They've got defrost, wait, and time, right? And then another thing, too, that I like to do is to put a paper towel on top just because, you know, stuff splatters. Um, so I am going to press defrost up here. And then I'll just do like 0.2 or something. I mean, it honestly doesn't really matter. And then I'll just press the start button and then just let it heat up that way. Once that's done, I am going to put it in I'm putting it in this pan right here. And I actually I've got to put some salt in that water. I'm not really gonna put a lot just because with my dad's health currently, he doesn't need a lot of salt at all. Like they told him that he needs to watch his salt content and liquid, actually, salt and liquid. Okay. So I'm pouring the butter into that pan that I showed you all earlier, just a second ago. So there it is, that's the butter. And then I'm gonna pour the shrimp in here. Let me move this soap out of the way. It's irrelevant. So there's that. And I'm pouring the shrimp in. Ah. And then one tablespoon of parsley. And so now it says we have to toss it. So we're just gonna mix this up. Okay, mix it. And so now I'm going to put it in the oven and it's going to have to cook for 15 minutes. Okay. So here we go. I charge it. Okay. All right. So that's in the oven now. We'll get it out in 15 minutes. So let's put our timer on. All right. Okay, so right now I've got the pasta boiling on the stove. And that'll be done in four minutes or so. All right. Okay, so as you all can see now, like that's definitely pink. Alright, so let me just get these out. Alright. So, we have to reduce the oven temperature to 350. So we're going to uh, drop this down to 350. And we have to dump the shrimp into a bowl. So I'm going to put the shrimp in here. I want to block the view. Ooh, that's hot. So that's the shrimp right there. And our pasta has got like one more minute left. And then we've got to drain that. Get hot water. All right, so let's see. And all that hot water, you want to pour it away from yourself. But because I'm trying to get a decent angle, I'm not quite doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's away from me, but typically you want to dump the pot this way instead of that way. But that is finally done. The heavy whipping cream we have to put into a medium saucepan. 
gosh, the lighting in some places are just bad. So, heavy whipping cream. So we need two cups of this. And so, well one cup's half a pint. I got two pints. So if one cup is half a pint, two cups is one pint. So that would be this whole container because this whole container is one pint. So simple math. I personally feel like, I personally feel like cooking is almost like a science experiment just because you have all these different measurements. Granted, you know, in science, you typically do like liters and milliliters and stuff like that. And here we're doing like teaspoons, tablespoons, cups. So it's slightly, the measurements are slightly different, but I feel like the concepts are slightly the same. Just different mixings of different things and different interactions create different flavors. So I'm actually going to, I know it says to cook it in a medium saucepan, but the thing is after the heavy, heavy whipping cream cooks, um, we are actually going to be pouring, um, pouring the pasta and the shrimp into it. So I feel like it needs to have a, I feel like it needs to have a decent sized pan. So I use the pan that I had the noodles in just because that trash bag is going to my parents' house. Just ignore it. But um, I am actually going to use the large pan that I just used for the noodles just because um, one, it's already dirty, and then two, if I'm going to be putting noodles and everything else in it, I figure I ought to use a bigger pan rather than using the medium saucepan, just out of precaution. So personally, I don't think that the noodles are going to fit in that medium sized saucepan. I mean, we can try it, but I don't think that it would fit, for sure. Okay, so this what we're going to do, we're going to take this heavy whipping cream. Okay. Heavy weapon came and bring it to a boil. All right. So we're gonna put this on like medium, and then we have to make sure that we stir this. And we're just gonna whisk this and let it cook for five minutes, and then we're gonna add Parmesan cheese. and uh, salt and pepper. I'm putting the Parmesan cheese in there now. Hold on. All right, so that's going in there. Just a dash of salt and pepper. So, ah, ha, ha. pepper and a dash of salt. So it says I have to bring it back to a boil again and then cook it for like another 30 seconds. I think that that's good. We're gonna move it off. And then we're gonna dump the pasta in it. And turn the eye off too. All right. Our pasta from earlier, we're gonna just dump this in there. So I'm gonna move this whisk out of the way. And we're just gonna dump the pasta in here. All right, and then we gotta mix it. So, so you all can see. All right. So we're just mixing the pasta up, getting that sauce all over it. So now, just gonna dump the pasta back in here. 
Mm, look at that. And then the shrimp goes on top. So just dump the shrimp on top of it. Look at that, man. And now we're gonna put the tomatoes. You've got like, cut up four cherry tomatoes into fourths and we're gonna put that on here. And we had to get this, make sure we got the seeds out and I thought I saw a couple seeds in here, but whatever, that's fine. So basically we're gonna spread these across. Just wherever. Okay. And then like one to two tablespoons of breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. I am actually gonna do two tablespoons just because I love bread and I love cheese. And that's typically what I do with this recipe anyway. I typically do two. So. We're just gonna like sprinkle this all over. Just wherever, you know. That's the same thing, that's just all over the pasta. Alright, and then we're gonna do our Parmesan cheese and then this has got to go back in the oven and bake. And typically I would just put my hands on it and sprinkle it across, but I might actually do it with this, so I just sprinkle it all over. Now that looks really good. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you all what it looks like now. All right. So this is how it looks. It looks really good, doesn't it? All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. All right, so there it is in the oven. And we're gonna let that cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. So I think I'm just gonna do 11 on it. So in 11 minutes, it ought to be done. Okay, so we've got about 19 seconds left on this. And then it's gonna be coming out the oven. All right, it's done. All right, that looks really good. Tastes good, Chad. Yes, we think we have everything we need. We're working Very good, Chad. 